We'd like to start today by acknowledging that we are gathered today on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. We're here today to speak about uh, two important announcements the club made this morning. Uh, first, as our communities are enduring another in a series of storm systems that have brought devastation to many in our province, uh, the club announced this morning that it will play a friendly in the Fraser Valley in the new year with all net proceeds going towards those impacted by flooding in the region. Uh, details of that will be confirmed in the new year. In addition, the club uh, has made cash donations to both the Red Cross and United Way BC. And our thoughts today are with those affected and we applaud the many people that are working day and night to help those in need. Another important announcement for us as a club today, as you know, earlier today, the club announced that Vanny Sartini has been named first team head coach and has agreed to a two-year contract through 2023. Vanny led us to the MLS Cup playoffs for the first time since 2017, including a six one-on-one -on -one record once we returned to BC Place. In his 14 MLS matches as acting head coach, we went seven, two and five for 26 points, the second best record in the Western Conference over that span. He started 22 different players using a different starting lineup in each of the 14 games. Uh, as well, Vanny will return in 22 with the same coaching staff that he finished the season with, including Ricardo Clark, Michael D'Agostino, Yusef Daha, Luke Summers, uh, Andrew Foster, and our head of physical preparation, John Pulley. So today to speak to those, we've got Axel Schuster, CEO and Sporting Director, as well as Vanny. Um, we'll let them speak first, then we'll take your questions to both. So with that, I'll start with Vanny, or with Axel Schuster, sorry. Yes, good morning, everyone, and it's an exciting day for uh, this organization. Um, already, uh, after we have taken one day off after the Kansas game, we have started the second day after the game to prepare the 2022 season, and we are completely in 2022 mood. Uh, one very important thing for that is that you have a head coach um, and we are very happy that we are today in the position to to announce, to do this announcement and to have a, a deal agreed, not only with Vanny, with everyone in his coaching staff, that we have set everything for a successful season next year. In the season, we want to do the next step, as I always say. Um, so we don't want to only continue what we have done in the last 14 plus one game, we want to use that as the basis for the next step and we want to challenge this organization, the whole group, every player again to do the next step. Important for me is also to, to, to speak one few sentences about the process. So um, it was in exactly the way I always said it. We haven't sit down together while the regular season was ongoing. Um, also because we thought that uh, we have a more important job to do than to, to negotiate and speak about uh, the next season. Um, but while we were playing those games, we had a strong and, and very, um, very uh, important process ongoing in the background where we were checking candidates. A lot of candidates have applied for this job. More than 100 have reached out to us by email or other um, um, methods to, to, to apply for this job. So we have developed an own platform for uh, doing our evaluation. And it is imp so important to say that because uh, when he is not only getting the job because he was just here and everyone excited in this moment about how the send end this season ends, and not only because uh, uh, there is this vibe uh, around the, the, whole first, uh, um, the whole club right now, now, he is getting the job because we had a strong process. We have compared him with a lot of other candidates and we had some strong main or important criteria. And um, I only want to summarize them here. One was that uh, the candidate has worked in youth development as we want to be a club that develops young players. And we want to continue to do that. Uh, a coach that had impact to a team and um, had a positive impact to a team and was able to implement a structure, a coach that made uh, individuals better in, over a time and uh, a coach that has experience in, in MLS or a comparable league. And um, as I said, we had a lot of candidates uh, and we had a lot of interesting candidates. I had uh, interviews with two of them. One has won two championships in different countries. So when he has got this job, because at the end of the whole process, he was also the strongest candidate and the, the, the candidate that convinced us more 
um, to, to continue on our path to be an organization that develops itself step by step until we finally at one point in the future win some silverware. Thank you. Okay, Benny. Yep. Uh, thanks, Axel, uh, and, uh, and and thank Tom. Uh, you know, I'm 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 very happy. That's uh, pretty simple today. I'm I'm happy, excited. Uh, I'm thankful and to the club and uh, uh, <clears throat> honored also that the club uh, decided to continue with me after this. Uh, I would say crazy but very beautiful three months that we when I when I stepped as a as an interim head coach. And uh, yeah, uh, I told you guys in the, in the media and in, at every moment that uh, when you guys asked me that uh, that was my kind of first choice. Of course, I would have been fun, happy to to get the job on a permanent basis. And uh, so I'm actually really, really excited now. I'm really looking forward to to start. I'm really looking forward to January 15 when we're going to start again the preseason because uh, I'm really energized and, uh, you know, it's... Uh, after the game in Kansas City, I was actually moody for one day and uh, uh, maybe not even one day because then I, wa I went for a walk on the seawall and I had a lot of people from uh, uh, that stopped me and say thank you for the great season that you guys had. And uh, so they, they actually, the fans cheered me up uh, the day after the loss. And uh, then when we agreed on... Uh, on, on for me to continue to be the head coach is uh, you know it's uh, it's all that I asked and uh, I know that uh, removing the label of interim uh, probably means just that I have more responsibility but uh, I would say I welcome the responsibility again I'm I'm truly honored that the club chose me and uh, I will give uh, a thousand percent try to let's say uh, put this trust in me and bring some. Uh, success for the city and, and the club. The other thing that I want to say that uh, the only, I would say, I would say condition because we were very, it was very easy to talk when uh, when we had to talk and say we agreed because, you know, they wanted me to stay and I wanted to stay. So it was very easy. Uh, the only condition I said that I wanted to keep the, the same staff that because uh, it's not, I would say, a day that we we nominate me we as a, as a head coach, but we decided to keep going with the same staff the same coaching staff that uh, we did uh, fantastically and they helped the club and myself a lot in these three, three months. So I'm really, really happy that uh, also we keep continue with the same group of people. Wonderful. Thank you, Vanny. Uh, we'll take your questions now. Uh, we'll start first with Jay Janor from Global Television. Go ahead, Jay. First off, Axel and Vanny, congratulations. Um, Axel, you mentioned the fact that you had more than 100 people apply for this job, and I know at the time you said it was going to be a global search. Little did you know at the time, I think, that the person who's going to do the job was right under your nose. When did you know Vanny was the man, and when did you know he was the person to direct this team? Yeah, I don't know if there was the exact date. I think, of course, uh, uh, when you had the chance here, uh, 14 plus one games to to prove it, it didn't happen after the last game or uh, after the Seattle tie. Um, I think um, it was somewhere after maybe half of the games in where we were only... Um, down to a short list of, of two, three candidates. And um, I think that was also the time where I stopped to interview people because uh, I didn't want it to be unfair and just interview people while I was tending more and more to, to continue with Vanny. But also, as I said, we, we had have not found the time or we, we were not, uh, we were not uh, um, desperate to to sit down while the season was ongoing and we were preparing game after the game Wednesday Saturdays Tuesday Saturday whatever so um, I also had first to hear what Renny has to say to that and also his expectations so we've only found that time after the season and it is more than only a contract it's also about the commitment to to sign in to everything the club has done um, also to be aligned on the targets we have, also to be aligned on the next steps. Um, and we haven't had that conversation. So uh, at least um, I, I kept the process a little bit open 
uh, until I finally found the time and we were sitting down, we were shaking hands and we said, we get that inked somehow, um, but we are completely on the same page. Thank you, Jake. Uh, Gemma, go ahead, please. Hi, gentlemen. <clears throat> Congrats, Benny, on uh, the Thank you. intern tag being removed. Um, what happens with the director of methodology role and the uh, U23 coach? I know Benny was pretty into uh, keeping those while he was intern, but I can't imagine that would be that would be a lot for a permanent head coach to handle. Yes, uh, first of all, the head of methodology role um, will not be replaced by a new director of methodology because uh, Wenny also will remain being responsible for, for that topic and that role. Um, of course, um, he will be limited by his time and the 24 hours a day only has. So we will discuss in the next weeks what is the right set up and how we can support him to to execute um, those this role and how we can uh, how we will have the best setup to coach our coaches and to to continue to build the academy as well um and benny how how do you how do you do it all um, how do you do the director of methodology while also leading the first team uh, yeah, of course, it was uh, a lot on the plate. And uh, of course, I was, uh, uh, <clears throat> I, I had these three months uh, that I did it on in a way that uh, to train for me to do this role, even in the, in the, in the next year, I can tell you that even when I was now, and we were in a very tight schedule, uh, game by game, I, I kept continuing doing the, my weekly meeting with coaches, with the coaches here in the academy, my uh, weekly meeting with the leaders of our academy centers uh, around uh, around Canada, and I kept, uh, I would say, uh, trying the, the process of uh, improving the coaches and, of course, uh, uh, trying to support them and develop them. Of course, what I stepped uh, I stepped down was the fact of being uh, every day at training with uh, with the academy and every day, uh, let's say, being on hand with the. With the uh, with the with the players on the academy. So, for the methodology part, I will be focused on big picture stuff. And then, as Axel said before, the club uh, will uh, will uh, will be organized in a way that uh, the message can trickle down and uh, the quality of the work uh, that actually we are d d is already there. Because I want to reiterate that is because we did very good with the first team in the last three months, but also the academy did very well. And uh, it's going to be keep doing in, in this way, in that quality. So is there anything, you've now had a, a bit of time to reflect back on the last three months, Danny. Is there anything that stands out to you, a, a memory or anything like that, um, that you'll look back on in 5, 10, 20 years? And, and that'll be what you remember about this, this crazy period. Yeah, there's a, I would say a couple for sure. Uh, uh, the when we won in Portland, that uh, comeback was amazing, and the the joy of the the players and uh, the 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 atmosphere that we had right after that in the in the locker room and in the plane uh, was uh, was fantastic. But uh, probably the best one. It's really hard to top, and I hope that we top that next year because it means that we're doing very well. Is the is the the Seattle night when we get the playoff and was the the celebration with the fan at the end? It looked like uh, it, it was fantastic. So it's uh, uh, I think that uh, I will uh, I will remember that night for a long time. Hopefully, I will remember that night like like one of the nights because ne next year we're gonna have uh, even more moment like that. Can you can you Benny talk about uh, this particular group of players that you have and and how do you feel about them moving forward? Well, the group has been fantastic this year. It's it's no secret that uh, the togetherness, the the really the willingness of uh, of the group of uh, going through the obstacles and uh, achieve something great has been some of uh, of the most important ingredients of our success in the last part of the of the season. And uh, I say every time that the group is the leader, and that's what it actually is because it's like. Uh, 
you don't have one single player, two single players that stand out. And uh, but uh, it was really a chemistry between a, a lot of players. And uh, you know, uh, I I look forward to work with these guys uh, uh, beginning of next year. Uh, uh, of course, it's let's. Uh, uh, question with the sporting director here so the transfer market is always fluid so we don't we don't know but i envision us having a lot of players that we have this year also next year and ask so i wanted to to touch on that transfer market with you where do you see uh there needing to be changes or improvements made within this group to move to to take that next step as you like to say yeah first of all uh, we have sit down with every single player um, for at least 30 minutes um, to understand uh, how they think about the last season and about how they think about their the next year and uh, um, if they are uh, feeling okay to being here or if they they feeling challenged or if they want to do a change after a year I think that's a fair question uh, not everyone always was playing and not everyone maybe got the minute he was looking for so we first had to 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 find out what the exact situation is in our group and um, in the same time as I said we we were scouting and we are still continuing to scout um, all year long like a shadow team for every single position um, we now also have to wait uh, what happens in the expansion draft um, so we will continue to build um, we have needs for sure um, it's too early to speak about them. The one thing I have to say is uh, why we are working on increasing the quality and the level of play of our team. Um, scouting and recruitment becomes more complicated because uh, you want to do the next step. And I always want uh, us to do a job that with every new addition or every change, we also increase the quality of our group. And um, you you have to to find very really good players to do that because we have been the second team the second best team in the second half of the season. So um, as I always say, we we don't want to sign the first one. We don't just want to maybe fill in a need that we just have. We want to do to get it done right. And I think uh, last season has proven that uh, um, that's the right direction. Um, that it maybe can take some time. Um, obviously, it was not it was not our ideal scenario to to have to wait so long for for Ryan Gold, for example. But at the end, it paid out, and we will continue to do that. So, saying that, um, we are working on that with uh, announcing Vanny and Vanny being officially our head coach. That will also help because moving forward, if you want to add a player, he also wants to know who is the head coach. And he mostly wants to speak with the head coach. So um, things like that will move forward from now. One more for me, because I know I'm taking up all of the time. Um, I, you talked about the player interviews. After those player interviews, is there anyone that you don't expect to come back next year? First of all, I think 99% um, uh, of all players, I think everyone, 100% of the players, uh, please correct me many if I'm wrong, uh, even those who have not got the minutes, minutes said that that was the best group they have ever been in. So uh, we have we had we had meetings with players where somebody said, "Hey, it wasn't my best year. It was a little bit disappointed for me. Uh, I was really hoping to get minutes or to play more." But one, th one thing I have to say that was the best group I have ever been in in my career, and that was set by guys that are young, but also by guys that are at the, at the second half of their career. So this is an amazing thing, and we we know um, that that's also the driver of success for us. So to touch this group is is dangerous because you can also make things worse. So said that there is nobody who really wants to run out of the door. Um, but of course, I respect that uh, a guy like the one I mentioned, he maybe wants to look for other options. So the important thing is that at the end, if we at the beginning of next season, if we start that we first have again such a group, um, the group is the driver of everything, um, that we have a group uh, like that together, 
and uh, that we have found solutions that satisfies everyone. And if somebody who was a little bit disappointed about this situation finds another club where he can play more minutes or he feels he feels better about doing that move, then we will do that. If if we also find a solution that helps us to backfill this role in in the way that we have another great guy that can give a lot to the group. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gemma. We'll go now to Tom Bogert. Thank you. Uh, congrats, Vanny. Uh, nice to speak to you and Axel. Um, this question, I guess, would be for Axel. You know, I know that you just kind of touched on it a couple of questions in a row there about the offseason, but you know, I guess just in general, it sounds like the plan is going to be to retaining most of this core of, of kind of what the team looks like in the second half of the season um, and maybe make a couple of changes a around that rather than say, you know, a, a number of different areas or options that you're looking at? We have already two new signings, almost almost new signings. Um, and everyone looks maybe is now surprised, but it's not that big surprise. Uh, Caio, uh, we added last season for a lot of money and is, a, is a one of the players we, we, uh, we, we want to develop, um, will return after he hasn't played a lot of minutes for this club and had a way bad serious injury. The other one is Peter Rita, uh, maybe the most unluckiest player in our squad because uh, after it took us uh, to, to get the paperwork done for, for two months, it took us two months to get the paperwork done and he finally arrived here. His vaccine that he received in Ecuador wasn't approved here, so he had to go to a two weeks full of hard stop quarantine and then he came back and had to build shape and uh, he couldn't play any minute. So um, that's already two additions uh, coming coming back or coming to the group. Um, and in general, as I said, in the second half of the season, where we had all our players together, we have been the second best team in the Western Conference and uh, the third best team overall in MLS. So. Um, you better don't touch too much in that group. Um, and that doesn't mean that we don't want to challenge them again. And we want, we don't think that, that we cannot make the next step with those guys. It's not that we only want to continue what we have done. We, we, we see still that a lot of those guys have not reached their, their ceiling. So, um, there is a lot of things we can do with this group, but of course we will also react to, 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 uh, to the uh, to the uh, maybe question of players or expectations of players to to go somewhere else, or to needs that that we have seen and where we think we can and find a better solution, or we find somebody not a better solution, we find somebody who can give something in addition to this group. Um, and and that, my second question kind of leads well to that because I was going to ask Vanny, you know, what what have you seen, I guess, from Cal? you know, before you became head coach, and I, I don't believe you played any games on you, if, if at all, and, and Pedro in training, and what can they add to this group next year? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> I think that Caio uh, can be, uh, is, a, is a midfielder that uh, is different from the other all the other midfielders that we have, because I think he has the uh, some technical quality that are different than the other one is uh, he can play those vertical pass to play in those, those ball in, in between lines. And is also very aggressive and uh, 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 very committed on the defensive side. And I think that he needs to be worked uh, and improved a lot as any other players on the tactical part. But yeah, with as I, I, what I what I've seen, I really I really liked it. To be honest, I think that's the base to to be optimistic in that. And uh, about Pedro, uh, Pedro is an interesting thing because you know it's like uh, we worked together like three weeks, and it was like five months that without. Uh, uh, without training, basically, a few months without training with the team, trained by himself. So he came here that he was a little bit uh, out of shape, to be honest. And the first week I was, Oof, well, which player is, is, uh, is he really that, is, is he really like this? And then actually after five, six, seven training sessions, I could see that, no, it's actually, there's a lot of potential. There's, uh, even if he's young, his intelligence on the field is, uh, is really good. And, uh, He's, uh, he's a guy that uh, is very good technically, but uh, he he comes with a very, I would say, team-oriented spirit on the field. And, uh, of course, we will have to work a lot with him and to because we know that the first year in MLS, it's hard for everyone because the the demands of the game here are are maybe higher than uh, in, in, in other leagues, especially physically. But, uh, again... For the two guys, I'm already optimistic that uh, 
As Axel said, I, I feel like we have already two new signings for the next year. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, let's go to Har next, please. Good morning, guys. It's nice to see you. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, I have a lot of questions. I wrote them down. I'm going to start with Coach Benny. Congratulations on Thank you, uh, your new deal. You are now the head coach. I know we were all surprised. Super shocked. Uh, did you have any discussions or any thoughts, uh, offers from any other clubs, or was your heart just with Vancouver? No, uh, my heart was with uh, with with the, here, and uh, I have to be. I, I I don't tell you who, but I had like uh, some uh, some guys that I would say gently inquired, like you say, hey, are you are you already done with the club? Uh, uh, you know, just even to say hello to me, but uh, you know that uh, there was no other. Um, uh, I would say chance for any other club if the if the if the White Caps were going to give me to give me the to offer me the deal and that's the reason why we we get an agreement after a minute. Well, maybe there was another club if Fiorentina would have called me, but I don't think uh, I don't think I'm in there rather. So it's uh, it's uh, uh, I'm very happy to stay here. Now, one of the conditions I think was mentioned earlier is that you were you wanted to bring the same staff back that you had with you to help you guys into the playoffs. Are you going to hire anyone else to join that staff or promote anyone? Or is it just the guys who are there now? Do you want to bring someone else in? Uh, no, the immediate staff will, will remain the same staff that we, uh, that we have now. Uh, of course, that's, uh, the club is not only the six guys that you've seen in that uh, uh, interview after Seattle. We have, uh, I would say, a big and large staff, and then it's a club staff, performance, medical, uh, data scientist, uh, athletic therapist. And uh, so the club is so big that, uh, you know, the club will make maybe some move, I don't know. And uh, But uh, I rely on the on the fact that uh, the people that are working here are, work, are world-class, and uh, they will be world-class even next year. All right, thank you. This question's for either of you. Uh, it's a two-year contract. Why two years? And is there any uh, club option for a third year? This question is for me. For, for Axel, I think. For me. Yeah. Why two years? Because uh, um, one year was too short and three years was too long. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason is that I think two years is a really good term. Um, as I always say, we want to build uh, things step by step. I think that uh, even when he, uh, in, uh, in his position, uh, is, is in a good position because he, he wants to prove something within the next two years and then his position to negotiate with me again is much better. Uh, that's my wish. I want to have it that way. Uh, so um, I think a two-year term is uh, is exactly the right to to do the next step, and then uh, to go from there. And it brings everyone in a good position. Um, also, Wenny, um, that's that's a reason and no option. Um, I don't like options in coaching contracts. Uh, I I like that uh, the, that uh, everyone is doing such a great job that. Uh, we we are very happy to sit down early to renegotiate the contract. Now that you've got the coach locked up for two years, what about your future with the team? Have you had any discussions uh, with the organization about keeping you longer? I believe you have one year uh, remaining on your deal with the club. Yeah, I have one year remaining with this club. Um, I think. Uh, um, this question is not really going to me. Um, I can say that uh, um, I I want to, to do exactly the same that I expect my coach to do, to do a good job and to prove that uh, that uh, we can continue to and we build from year to year. I, I remember my by way that we have uh, we have all been together here on that call uh, one year ago, and you were asking me about that, and I said uh, I want us all to sit down in one year again, and I will ask you, do you think we have done the next step? And that was a step forward. So that's my approach, and everything else will come. Um, we we preparing the next year and. 
I still have a, a, a little bit more than one year of contract, so I'm I'm not I'm not nervous right now about that, and I think the right time will come. All right, we'll get back to you on that question. Uh, I believe the deadline has come in regards to options declined and options exercised and bona fide offers made. Uh, when will the club be announcing that? And can you share any information on those three uh, subjects? Thank you. No, unfortunately, I cannot share. Um, although everyone knows that the timeline is over since a little bit more than one hour because we have discussed the last uh, topics in the last 24 hours and the timeline was also only us giving a notice to the league because the players are under under contract with the league so the league now has to give the notice to the players um and we also we also will follow up with a few players on that topic uh, f uh in the next hours and uh, i think everyone understands that we first want to speak with our players before we announce something officially Lucas Cavallini, he's a player on the pod, on the roster right now. Will he be on the team for that first game in Columbus? What is his future with the team? I know he is currently under contract. Yes, and as long as he's under contract, he will return early January to camp and prepare for the next season. Um, everyone knows that uh, it is a general saying for me and it's true for every player every player in this club is for sale it depends always on the offer so if somebody wants to leave or somebody doesn't feel comfortable to stay here or it's a club somewhere else is totally attracted by our player things can change that's the part that's that's a part of our business that's just a reality um, as long as we are not um, a Bayern Munich, um, because then you are sitting in another chair and you can decide things differently. So for that reason, I would not say about any player that there is a guarantee that he returns. Um, but uh, as long as everyone has a contract, there is a way big likelihood that he returns. Now, it sounds like you're throwing out a fishing rod. Maybe trying to catch some offers for Cavallini. Do you see a future with the team for Cava? Has he expressed his desire to move on from the organization? Yeah, that's a, that's those conversations we are not doing in front of a Zoom call. And for that reason, I also don't quote from those conversations. Um, I can only say that uh, Lucas had a very unlucky season because he was uh, he wasn't here in preseason. He was gone for a long part in midseason. He was twice injured in a very bad moment. And uh, uh, while all that things were really unlucky for him, and he was not uh, definitely not in, in a situation that was uh, very satisfying for him, he showed up in an amazing way as a, as a guy in the locker room. Uh, he, he gave a lot of positive energy to this group and he was pushing the whole project. And I think that was a strong commitment um, as a DP to support the other guys and everyone looks up to him and thinks, hey, if he is not complaining about his situation, I cannot complain about my situation. So he, he, has, he has a part in all of that successful story. And uh, I acknowledge that. And now it's, uh, it, it would, as with a lot of other players, to find out what's the best thing for him. Uh, but we are not fishing for something here. Um, um, I, as I said, we have finished second. And Lucas played his role in that. And if he if he stays here, uh, because we all think that's the best thing, then he will play an important role also next year. Because I don't hope, I really don't hope, and I don't see that coming that he has another unlucky season like that again. I know that other people have questions. I have one quick one, if that's all right. Um, I believe Andrew Rose and Toss Rickards are free agents. Uh, would you like to have them back with the team? Have they? express the desire to return what's the update and on those two veterans they are only free agents if we are not finding any form of an agreement until the 31st of december because they have contracts until the 31st of december it's a little bit a different situation than with our options the options we had to take today and that automatically prolongs contract um, their situation is only a little bit different because we have no automatic option or option that we can to take, but it doesn't mean that we are not in in conversations also with those two, and we have a, 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 a 
full months more time to to sort that out and then if we would not find a solution then they are free agents yes thank you Hart. um thank you guys we'll uh, jump forward now to josh and then we'll wrap up with alex go ahead josh hi guys after nice to see you vanny congrats on the head coaching job i just wanted to ask do you see yourself integrating more of the academy into the first team now with you taking over as director of, of methodology and the head coach in both roles? Uh, can, can you say it again? Sorry, I didn't hear. Do you, do you see yourself integrating more of the ah, academy, yeah, yeah. the under 23 academy into the first team now that you know, you're kind of hands on with everything? Yeah, that's, uh, I would say that's the hope that we have in, uh, you know, we know that uh, we, uh, Axel said, says it a lot of time and he also is the will of the ownership to make us uh, a development club, but to be a development club and to try to develop young uh, young players in uh, into the into the MLS. I that's that's what we that's what we aim. At the same thing, at the same time, we are here to try to be uh, again to do next steps every time. So this year, next steps has been uh, getting the playoff. Next year is at, at least confirming us and being there. So. We're in a business of results, so uh, I would say that our challenge is to uh, uh, f- develop players that are going to be up to the challenge, and uh, also not to be scared sometimes to play to play young players. So that's I would say it's a it's a challenge that I embrace. And uh, when someone from the academy makes his way on the first team, we're all happy. So. We will try to do it, but it's not that it's now that we are going to become and play. We're going to play with eleven guys from the academy. You you need to earn your spot in uh, in your team. So obviously you took over midway through the season, but do you see yourself making any changes tactically to start next year, or just kind of going to wait and see how the roster fills out and and all of that? The the most important thing when you decide uh, the tactics for a team is. Uh, to play the team in the in the in the best way that suit the players that uh, that you have at your disposal. So you know the way that I chose the way that we were playing this season is, was because we were thinking that uh, I was thinking that with the player that I had in the roster that was the best way to 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 approach game and to play. So of course uh, uh, we have a base now, so we know that we. We, we can play in this kind of structure and we have to develop on this kind of structure. But uh, what I've, uh, <clears throat> as a coach, we are always trying to also trying to do something different. And uh, for example, what we didn't do this, this season, it's because when I took over, it was literally a game every three days. So we have to be, to value much more consistency than flexibility. I, I'd like the team to become even a little bit more flexible. So for sure in preseason we'll work uh, on a primary structure, but also on, on a way that to have a secondary structure too. Awesome. And uh, Axel, you know, we spoke at the end of last season about the steps that you wanted to take with this organization. Where do you think you are now after this year? You know, the team made the playoffs, but Obviously, the ultimate goal is to win an MLS Cup and even farther than that. You're somewhere in the middle of uh, of the ladder. <laughs> so um, I think we have uh, we, we we were coming from from the last spot uh, and uh, we just failed to move into the playoffs in a way complicated last year. And we now have finished sixth in this year in another way complicated year because uh, sometimes it feels like several years that we have played this season um, but it was only one year and in the first half of this year we haven't been at home we never played at home we have been on uh, uh, in, in Salt Lake uh, what was a big disadvantage because the, in comparison to last year we had to play in Salt Lake without fans while all the other teams were staying at home with fans so I think um, um, we want to do the step, steps sustainable. So for me, there is no doubt that the, the, the end of this season is the, is the starting point of next season. And there, are, there are a few more positions ahead of us. And uh, of course, there's also uh, challenges in, in the Canadian Championship and also to, to in, in playoffs to, 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 to win something with this club. 
And um, I would say we are somewhere in the middle for me. Um, there is enough space to do other steps. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm up for it and I'm, I'm fully energized to do the next one. Great. And I was a uh, uh, last one for me as long as you could provide an update on the ongoing investigation with the, the Vancouver White Caps community executives. Yeah, it, there is not a lot of things I can update about uh, other than that the investigators uh, are, are having asked a lot of questions and we are providing answers. Uh, they have asked for a lot of uh, documents. We are providing those documents. As I always said, it's an investigation. Uh, not together with us or not not an investigation that is uh, working for us. It's an investigation uh, uh, against the club. And uh, so for us right now, um, there is not a lot we can comment. Even the investigators asked us not to comment on any specific things um, uh, other than to say we are fully supporting the process and we are doing whatever the investigators asked us to do right now. Uh, so will you be the one to, if, again, if, because everything's uh, ongoing investigations, will you be in charge of replacing the executive positions if it comes down to something like that? So I, I said, and I can repeat that, that I uh, only felt comfortable to put my name up here to lead that process for the club, to, to lead the club through this process, if at the end, or if I have the freedom to, to decide and to do what I think is right. So that means at the end of this process, I have the right and uh, the backup to decide what I think is right. And uh, there is, uh, um, everything is possible. But uh, again, I, I uh, first want to see what the, the outcome of this investigation is, but nobody has to be worried um, that I have not the, the, the power to decide what is right. And I will do that because as I always said, my name was never connected with that. I have nothing to do with what happened 10 years ago in this club. So I can only do that if at the end I can take the right decisions and do the right steps for the civilization to finally and uh, uh, really to, to resolve all of that what happened in the past. Absolutely. Well, thanks for your time today, Arthur. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Okay, we'll wrap up now with Alex. Go ahead, Alex. Uh, hey guys, uh, just two here for me. First, uh, to Vanny, obviously, congrats on, on the role. Just uh, the one I have for you. How close, I guess, you're going to be working with, with Axel in terms of, you know, players, uh, player acquisitions uh, to be kind of, you know, if you have any demands or not demands, but, you know, requests for him in terms of players you bring in. And I guess kind of adding to that, are there any specific spots in the roster you want to see it added to in the offseason? Yeah, of course we we talk every day, and we are we are in uh, street uh, street cooperation, and uh, and uh, uh, we are uh, uh, let's say working to try to to improve the roster. But what I want to say is like uh, I think one of the uh, reason why I've been chosen uh, it's because I'm a, I'm a coach. I'm very good at coaching a team. I'm very good at. Uh, I know that sounds cocky now, but anyway. But I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm, uh, I'm good at doing my job on the field, leading a team and try to improve the team that I have. Uh, uh, I think that the club has a very strong structure now with uh, Axel as a sporting director. We have a very good uh, uh, scouting team, and I think that uh, uh, my job, of course, is to give opinion and to give something, but. Uh, I don't think I should be kind of involved too much in the in the look for another player or in the or in the dealings or everything because uh, my job is to coach this team and so I have uh, I would say the full trust that uh, the the team that I will have the January 15 will be a competitive one and uh, so there's no need for me to have demands or to have a specific request but of course there's uh, there's a uh, talk and uh, uh, input and uh, opinion that we share every day. I want to I want to add a few sentences to that uh, because uh, he is absolutely right. As was part of uh, of our search mask uh, in Germany, we have two words and we call a coach. We call him sometimes manager or we call him football teacher, and we were looking for a football teacher. 
um, and when he's also for that reason the ideal profile. And I want to I want to quote here something Thomas Tuchel said, said in a very long uh, interview he did with Sportbild after the season about his success in Chelsea, and he said uh, that one things that are critical for him and that helps him to be so successful in Chelsea is that he can completely focus on the work with the players and on the pitch, and he only has to to connect with Marina Ganskoria and Peter Czech, and uh, that this gives him the maximum of time to work on making the team better and players better. And that's exactly the approach that we also have. We want Wenny to give, do we want Wenny to have the maximum time to work on the pitch to make the team and the players better? And having a structure around that in that we can trust and one part of uh, recruitment, recruitment and scouting, obviously, is having Nikos Overhaul here and, and uh, having his qualities uh, and using his qualities in the right way to, to, to be uh, ready to, to sign the right players that we need. And this one for you, Axel. I mean, MLS, naturally, there's always a lot of roster turnover. You guys over the last few off-seasons have had a lot. This off-season, it looks like your roster is mostly set. How much roster turnover, turnover do you anticipate uh, in terms of uh, guys going in, guys going out? Do you think it's going to be kind of another bigger off-season, or do you you're trying to keep it to one or two guys leaving, one or two guys coming in? Yeah, I have not a fixed number, and as I said, it was also important for us to understand what what our players are thinking about that and what everyone individually thinks about this situation. Um, of course, we are not expecting. Uh, we I really don't expect such a big turnover again. As I said before, we have a very successful group for a lot of reasons, because we have a lot of very talented and skilled players. We have a good mix of older and younger players. And we had an incredible atmosphere in the group. The group was the driver. We have also a group that that uh, correct a lot of things internally. Um, so it it's again, I can only repeat that it's also dangerous to touch too much because you you not we are now in a position where we can also make things worse. So uh, for that reason, we will think very carefully what we do, and we will really really be careful in 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 our recruitment process. And the bar is way high for. For everyone who wants to join our organization. Thank you to, to both of you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Alex, and thanks everyone for joining us today, and to Axel and Vanny for a very generous amount of time. Uh, have a great day, everybody. Thank you.